Closer. Hey everyone, welcome to the Pops and Drops podcast. On this week's episode, we have Zinkron. She is amazing. She's from Canada. She is a DJ, a music producer, and a fire performer. Um, so hey, how's it going? Hey, amazing. Thank you so much for having me on the podcast, Chance. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad you're here. Uh, so just kind of want to dive in, get to know you a little bit more. Um, when did you first start in the music industry? Um, I feel like it was probably around seven years ago that I officially committed to it, but I've been playing around and dabbling with music all my life, just a lot more awkwardly. <laughs> I feel like <laughs> I um, I finally settled into embracing my own uh, music within the past seven years. And your mom was in bands too when you were growing yeah. up? Yeah still is i uh, she is uh she was singing uh since she was a teenager and uh music has always been such a huge part of her life and so um even while she was pregnant with me uh she was on stage rocking out and like up until the literally the very minute that she had to go to the hospital she was performing <laughs> so uh yeah I, I really uh i spent a lot of time i i was born in florida and i spent a lot of time at the tiki bars and uh, festivals and music studios down there growing up getting to watch her perform and that was definitely a huge inspiration for me that is so badass when i was born my dad was a dj like on the radio no way really yeah. so oh I, I, for which station uh he did he ran kiss fm in st louis um for that's when i was born he was running kiss fm but he was also a club dj in portland and he launched a couple of radio stations in texas too but that was that's before i was cool. born but yeah is yeah, he me. still doing music stuff right now no not really i mean we work on songs together every once in a while he Aww. will i made a song called the beastie buckingham with him um and he's definitely my he's one of the ears that i have listened to my music before I send it to the labels or release it. Um, he's got a very like radio voice. <laughs> so uh, he, yeah, he was, uh, but he's, I mean, I grew up on listening to like ACDC and kiss and, you know, I was, music was always a part of my life growing up too. So that's, that's really cool. It's kind of, so yeah, I'm trying to instill it into, we, I've got two daughters or two stepdaughters, harmony and melody. And they they are constantly singing in the car and they listen to my music and I made songs about them and with them too. So it's very suiting for their names. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How old are they? <laughs> um, seven and nine. Seven and nine. Harmony and melody. Oh my gosh, I love those names so much. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah, it was meant to be. When I met Rowdy, my girl, she told me that oh. she had she had two daughters, Harmony and Melody, and they were they were six and well five. They were like five and seven at the time when I first met her. So, yeah. Um, yeah. It's really important, I think, to get started young in music. Cause yeah, definitely. Uh, do you feel like um, people, like some people just have it, like they they have the, the talent, or do you feel like it's something that has to be learned? Like, Is that an innate thing, in your opinion? I, you know... I think it's probably a little bit of both, but I definitely feel like there are people that are born with it. I think that there, there's a way to, there's, there, there are certain things that you can teach, you know, but if, especially if your parents were, were musicians and artists, I think that that spark is carried on. I think it would be hard for someone who, who's, I think it's, I think it's hard for certain people to get into the industry if they weren't raised in it or didn't have that spark to begin with but i definitely i know that there are people that are definitely born with it i don't know what the it is but i do know that there are people that are born with it and you can tell when you go and see someone live like if they've got if they've got it or not me and rowdy took our girls to see atmosphere yesterday it was their first oh concert. so good yeah and he was he was phenomenal 
Um, and so was one of his other openers. I like to think that music music is very subjective. You know, everyone has their own taste. But I definitely believe that there there are people that are born with it. You know, my my our daughter Harmony can beat like can beatbox like a beast, and she's no like, way. Yeah, and she's nine, and I'm like, how <laughs> how can you do this? You know, I started when I when I first started making music. I was around eleven. I would uh, I found out about uh, Audacity, and I started remixing pro wrestlers entrance music themes oh, that's so cool <laughs> yeah because I, I was really into pro wrestling at the time and i it, it wasn't something that it wasn't something that it, it just it was like i just felt like it was something i had to do and i feel like there's a lot of people out there where it's like it is ingrained and it is like i i wanted to be an actor i went to I went to college for acting i studied acting i went to la i spent 10 years in la trying to be a movie star and Although I was, you know, I got minor roles and stuff, it wasn't the thing. And my and and when I moved back up here and I dove into music, I realized that music is is my thing. It's it's the thing for me. And I kind of tried to get away from my dad's not a DJ now, but that's what he was when I was born. And I I wanted to go off on my own path, but I found my way back to kind of doing what he did you know <laughs> so that's I, so interesting because similarly i'm uh, I, for my whole life i was like i'm not gonna be like my mom and then here i am like seemingly making all these same decisions and being obsessed with music i similarly i felt like i had gone in a totally different path than music thinking well i i just don't have it like it, some people have it and i don't and and then i was like suppressing it almost for a bit and now coming back to it i'm like why why did i even avoid doing this i, I think most of it was like a lack of confidence or just lack of skill fear even you know, trying to trying to rebel against yeah exactly against what you against what you were born with you definitely have it listening to listening to your sound you definitely have it um so growing up kind of going to your mom's things what is there any what's the craziest thing that's like happened to you at a show either attending or when you were performing I feel like um, the first time I brought my mom to a music festival was really interesting. Uh, it was Astral Harvest up in uh, Canada, and it was just it was such an interesting experience because the first night of the festival, my mom was like a little bit nervous a little bit on edge she's like oh my gosh everyone's on drugs assuming that i must also be on drugs because you know everyone else is i yeah. mostly survive on weed and coffee if i'm uh, getting ready for a performance so um yeah i i felt like bringing her to that show she was a little on edge a little uncertain the first night I found her in the van reading a book like that's <laughs> that was the vibe and then by Sunday morning I had been up doing interviews and I uh, like working throughout yeah. the festival by Sunday morning 6 a.m sunrise at the main stage I hadn't seen my mom all night and there she was on the dance floor like in the the middle of this uh huge stage just with a beer in her hand like grinding on some guy and I'm like I, I yes. that was not what I expected <laughs> to find at all but I uh, it really like it was just so like her you know but also it was cool to see that evolution of like going from one extreme to the other yeah uh, or like and this always has to come back with her because she's like the wildest person I know. She, uh, there was one show where she just like took off her bra and threw it on the stage. Like oh she is just a wild lady. Sometimes where I'm like, I ended up being a little bit more shy and reserved. Like there are times where I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't <laughs> know this lady. Like I, I could bury my head in the dirt kind of thing. Um, at the same time, I'm so inspired by her ability to just be so authentic and not even be able to to hide herself. And so for me, like that's really as much as I want to hide under the covers like that, that is actually a huge inspiration for me. And she's always a highlight when I get to see her out at events. That's so cool, though. That is that's that's awesome. That's hilarious. I took my dad, me and my dad went to Audio Autistic down in San Francisco. 
um, with my sister. And I, I messed up big time. <laughs> I took what I, I I took some research chemicals. We'll just say that I don't really do. I don't really do any hard drugs, but I, it was at a point in my life where I was getting over a bad breakup and I was just trying to escape the pain. It was before yeah. I really dove like fully into music too, but we went to audio autistic um, and the beginning of it was awesome. My dad was wearing like a Batman t-shirt and dancing like for hours and people like surrounded us and were like chanting bat dad, bat dad, bat dad. Oh my gosh. Um, but then <laughs> Then the things that I don't even know what they are kicked in and they and they, my sister grabbed me and was like, we are leaving. And I was like, no, I want to sit finish watching Lewis the Child and I haven't seen Slushy yet. And she was like, you are freaking out, man. And I was like, no, you're freaking out, man. And she, but anyways, they got me out of there. And uh, but my my dad was not like scared. He was like he was like, oh, well, okay. I'm, he, he was like tired too. But he, I just remember the car ride back. He was like laughing his ass off at me because I was <laughs> like, I don't even know what I was on, but I was tripping balls. Did <laughs> you guys ever do anything together or was he just like, it, no, just my dad, telling you it's all you? <laughs> my my dad, uh, he, he doesn't really do, he doesn't do, he, my dad, when he was growing up, he's allergic to weed. What? Um, <laughs> So, like, I gave him a dab once, and he passed out and started foaming at the mouth. When oh, he was, gosh. When, and it might be psychosomatic, because when he was uh, 11, I think, uh, my grandma, his mom, wanted to make sure that he never smoked weed. So, she got him super high when he was, like, <laughs> 11. And ever since then, if he has any any kind of weed, he either passes out. He he basically passes out off of, like, ba- like nothing. <laughs> um so he doesn't really do anything we've we've uh had mush he's done mushrooms a couple times mm-hmm. um but other than that he doesn't he doesn't partake he's he's like corporate dude <laughs> um but yeah he it it was it was it was interesting <laughs> I, I, I still like to this day cringe at myself thinking back about me doing that so i didn't even know what it was i didn't even know what it was <laughs> Some dude just came up to me and was like, hey, man, you want to buy these? And I was like, sure. <laughs> but it it was so bad. And my sister was so my sister was upset. She was oh. like, she was like pissed at me because she had to leave early. But she wound up going back the next day to see the second day. And we drove up. We drove back up to Oregon. Um, so, I mean, we didn't me and my dad didn't get tickets for the second day. So and I had to get, we both had to work, <laughs> too. So. But oh, so you had to cut it a little short that time. Yeah. And I really wish that I hadn't taken those things because I I remember seeing low because audiotistic is like EDM and hip hop kind of. It's put on by Insomniac, I believe. Oh, sweet. Um, and so they had we saw Lil Wayne, Lil <laughs> Wayne, and then we saw Lewis the Child. And like halfway through Lewis the Child, I was not in the stratosphere i was on another planet um, <laughs> how do you feel about like i i if you had to choose taking like psychedelics at home or at a festival which do you prefer i would never do it again i would never take psychedelics at a festival i think it i mean i did it like i i did it when i first started raving you know but now that i'm old you know i'm i'm like in my mid 30s i'm older now i uh I, I mean, I'll smoke weed all day everywhere. I don't care. Like that, that I don't can even consider a psychedelic. I need that. It's like, yeah. it's like stabilizes me. Um, but I I don't really, I, I, I feel like if you go into a rave, you're going to a festival, you're going to experience music. And whenever I took, whenever I took psychedelics, when I was going to raves and stuff, I was doing it because I was in pain and I was trying to escape. Mm-hmm. But the rave is where I always want to escape to now. Like if I go, I, I, and I stay relatively sober. I don't really, I'll get, I, I don't really drink that much either when I'm at like base Canyon or EDC or any of those. I, I, I'll have a, I'll have like a couple beers and I'll smoke weed. Um, But I don't know. It's also, you never know what you're getting to. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And so like I it's it's prim- primarily now because I've had that bad experience and it wasn't it wasn't bad while I was in it. I wasn't scared, but like hearing and seeing video because my sister took video <laughs> of seeing the video of me freaking out and like like that's why I don't want to do it at festivals anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. So I, I find it can be really overstimulating sometimes at festivals. Um, but I guess that can be the case even at home. Yeah. I just felt like, um, you know, sometimes I, with certain psychedelics, you end up knowing too much. And yeah. I, sometimes you, you just can't handle knowing that much when all you want to do is just chill and listen to music, you know? So I think I, I've taken t- an enjoyment to like doing it at home a little bit uh, here and there, but it's so rare now. I feel like I used to uh, enjoy just chilling at home and working on music or art on like a, just the tiniest amount of mushrooms. Yeah. And that was kind of nice for a bit, but now I find I haven't been really exploring in that way as much i feel like weed has been kind of nice in in just keeping me calm and and happy you know like i i feel like that's kind of an everyday chill sort of thing my favorite thing is just to like smoke a joint in the shower lately (laughs) because i just love the warmth of the shower and i find i like listening to music in the shower too best acoustics i get so inspired and i yeah, that's kind of like my thinking spot lately. <laughs> Just yeah. I in the shower, I get so uh, stoked to work on music immediately after almost every single time. Yeah, I do the same with, but I I do the same with baths. I'll take like I I usually hit a vape pen on oh, chilling yeah. and chilling in a bath and listening to music, and then that's like my way of decompressing. Um, Definitely. Yeah. I started uh I started doing this very dangerous thing where, um. I've taken the laptop in the bath with me and started producing music <laughs> well in the bath. Because that is very I, dangerous. I know. I know I shouldn't do it. But again, I get so inspired by water. I, I just like I, yeah. I get so inspired in there that I have to do it. But I know I probably shouldn't. <laughs> Yeah, they need to make a waterproof laptop for DJ oh, for a producer. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so water inspires you. What else mm-hmm. what else kind of inspires you? Is it is it just everyday things or where where do you draw most of your inspiration from? Oh, so many places. I really feel inspired by the entire world around us, nature and even the sounds in our house, the the sounds that don't seem like any big deal everything is music all around us the human voice um when we're cooking the pots and the pans and i like the noises they make it's all inspiring um i I feel inspired by just the world around us it's comforting i i feel like there are so many endless possibilities of sound and that's so exciting and it can be so overwhelming at the same time like where do you start how do you make a a song when there is everything available every sound that you could possibly find is available around you or on the internet and so um yeah i've been just inspired by life just living uh hearing the music and everything around me and also uh, by so many different genres. I mean, I love music of every type and, and I'm not just saying that. Like I, I'll have days where I'm listening to uh, classical music and opera or I'm listening to hip hop or I'm listening to death metal or I'm listening to indie or so many different assortments of electronic music. Like there's there's just... I, I feel like there's just so many incredible genres out there uh, to also get inspired by. And I love cross genre creations. Yeah. I, I mean, I consider myself a genre fluid producer. I don't mm-hmm. stick to one. I don't stick to one. So that's really cool that you're inspired by all of them. It's kind of I'm like me. That's that's what we live Is in. A very, it- we live in a very musical universe. Oh, absolutely. I I feel like it's so hard to be stuck in a box. And there is kind of a challenge with that. Maybe you have some ideas on this. Like, 
I find myself wanting to produce some music that's super chill and lo-fi just for when I'm vibing and driving at night or like smoking a joint at night and just chilling. And then I find myself also creating dance music. And I also create like things in between and trying to figure out, do you release it under the Well, same alias or do you do a second alias for chill stuff? What's your thought on that? well, this is what I did. Um, so I am signed to eight different labels. Damn. I send music and I send music. I send different types of music to the different types of labels. So it's still all under the umbrella of me, mm -hmm. but The, each end of it, each label releases different kind of music. So I'm with, <clears throat> I have, I'm signed to Blanco y Negro, which is Steve Aoki signed to Blanco y Negro. They've done stuff with Don Diablo, Armin Van Buren, like a bunch of big name people. I send my dancey, my dance, my chill dance stuff to them. Um, and then I'm also with Glitch World and I send them my Glitch Hop. Hmm. I've, I did a kind of, uh experimental dubstep song that i signed to lifted global fat panda was the first people that signed me i don't send them in stuff like anymore because they're a smaller label they're still a really good label but they're just smaller and they don't have the reach that others do but that that's kind of how i've looked at it also my moniker is the closer so i feel like i could get away with it because i could be like yo i'm closing <laughs> down every genre i'm closing down every show right so that's enough my 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 name came from being in tech and real estate sales and that's what one of my friends uh whose name was also harmony but she passed away she actually gave me that moniker um when we were selling property management software um so that that's just me i have thought and i've tried to launch side things um i was gonna do i was gonna go by opportunidad which is chance in spanish i was gonna do that for like my dubstep stuff but it failed <laughs> like it went <laughs> like it did not get take, take it off no like i submitted music to a bunch of different labels under that and no one picked it up and literally the exact same songs i submitted under my name and i just added my tag to it and it got picked they got picked up i think really? i think that once you hit a certain following that labels are more inclined to signing you um So it all depends on where, what, what path you're trying to take. Now, labels themselves don't have the kind of power that they did. They, they aren't giving like signing, like the, like Warner and the big ones who signed the pop artists and stuff give signing bonuses, but like Monster Cat and NCS and a lot of the electronic labels, uh, you're signing with them for exposure so that your stuff can get on their playlists. And that's kind of what they do now. They're just like a, they're just like a promotional machine. They're not like full scale labels anymore. Now the label still can get you like sync licensing deals and stuff like that. So your stuff is on TV and movies, but I don't know. I, I don't know about, I, I think that it's important to build if, if your if you make music and you make music of all different genres then then that's your brand you're 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 not a boxed in artist and i think that there's a freedom that comes with that and so my suggestion would be to release it under your name i don't think you need to have a secondary thing because a lot of a lot of people have tried that um i forgot who it was i think it may have been getter so there was there was there was an artist who was a dubstep artist and then he tried to be a rapper hmm. and he released i think it might have been getter i don't i feel like it might not have been getter but it was someone who was at a getter concert <laughs> that i went to down in eugene and it didn't work at all because he didn't no one knew who this side project was you know it once you once you've built up a brand i think it's more important to build your brand over you being able to do all kinds of music versus having separate brands for each one of your genres. Now, right. the, the big mistake that I made was doing albums, which were all different genres. Because <laughs> oh. people, people don't want to go for... A lot of my earlier albums that I dropped are... It's like house and then future bass and then dubstep and then chill. And it, it's just everything. And 
to me, it sounds awesome because I like variety when I'm listening to stuff. But certain people, like if you're if you're a if you're really big into dubstep, you might hate house and vice versa. So I think that it's important to release them as singles or do full albums in one genre and and, and do another album in a different genre. I just wouldn't mix them within the same like EP or album. But I think you you definitely should release them under your under your name, under your brand that you're building. What do you have for advice to someone uh, that would be reaching out to record labels and things like that? Uh, what would you say is the best way to ensure that they, um, they you take you on? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I use labelradar.com. Mm -hmm. um, that's how I got signed to Blanco. It's how I got signed to Lifted. It's how I got signed to Glitch World and Fat Panda and uh, base boosts, all the labels that I got signed to, I got signed through Label Radar. Um, and it's just about building your brand. And then on the on Label Radar, you build your profile. So you say who you are, it links all your socials. They so, so they see where all your fans are, or how many fans you have. Um, and then the other important thing is making sure that the 20 seconds that you send to them. So what, the way that Label Radar works is you upload a song and then you pick the 20 seconds of the song and then those 20 seconds and then you send it to the labels you pick the labels that you want to send it to you send it to the labels and then they listen to 20 seconds and if it's not good they're not going to sign it or if it's not the best 20 seconds of that song they're just going to pass because they have thousands upon thousands of submissions that they listen to every day mm -hmm. um the other way to do it is to find a and r contact lists um and they're out there uh you can submit directly to i know that like wakan doesn't isn't on label radar and wakan is very uh you you can send it to they have a demo submission thing on their website um so it's going to the label's website but like if you go to monster cat and you go to label submission like submit to monster cat it'll redirect you back to label radar really okay yeah so it's just about getting it out there and sending it to as many as you possibly can. The thing about label radar in particular, and some of these other, I mean, I don't know. I'm just, just from my experience, I didn't get signed with Blanco until after I was already signed with, um, after I was already signed with uh, uh, Fat Panda. So it's about, it's kind of about building the like going up the ladder so that might i would my first my first suggestion would be to get on label radar okay um and it's just labelradar.com good advice thank you i yeah. uh i feel like i've got so many songs on the back end and it feels like it, it's time to release it but Damn, making songs is one thing, but then try, the process of marketing and uh, trying to figure out how to release everything, if you're going to do it a single and where to release it, or if you're going to make an album or and how the art's going to look and how the marketing plan, it, there's just so many steps. It feels like uh, music is just a, a slice of everything that is um, required for releasing a song. Do you yeah. have um, any tactics for like how you release a song, like uh, the amount of days you promote in advance, if at all? Yeah, you like want. That? I mean, I set. So, I have. This is just because I went into crazy hyper mode. Um, but from now until middle of January, I have a song dropping every single Friday from here until mm. middle of January. And on December first, December first, I have my seventeenth album coming out. Wow. The um you need you want to give it at least well i mean on the back end like on spotify in order to get on one of the playlists for spotify you need to pitch them at least two weeks before the song comes out so if you're going to release it through distro kit or cd baby you want to at least have a month because it takes it takes the the back end of like cd cd baby usually takes longer than distro kit distro kit can usually get your stuff out there really quickly um but you, I would want to. You want to have at least a month, and then you want to start promoting it a couple weeks before it drops, and then especially the day before and the day of, 
need to promote it like crazy. That's a that's a, a really great and, and thorough explanation of, of your release. I, I feel like um, to have that plan is probably so important to give people uh, time to prepare or at, at least time to uh, know about your release coming up. Also, uh, to build up a little bit of expectation, like people know that they can trust that something's going to be there every Friday. I feel like that really creates um, not only a workflow and schedule for you, but also suspense for everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, and I just started, I, did, I mean, there was a while where I was not dropping stuff, you know, all the time. Um, but now I've, now it's kind of just my flow. Uh, if I don't work on a song every day, my brain literally starts to itch. <laughs> so I, uh, I, I have to be working on songs constantly in order to, in order to like scratch that itch. So have you always been like that? Um, no, uh, that really, that I had a, that, that kind of started when I, I did, I did DMT like right before 2020 and that's kind of when I started really getting into diving deep into my music. And ever since I had that experience, uh, that's when I had that, that itch that I had to do, that I had to like, you know, I had to get, yeah. it, get it taken care of. So that's, that's kind of when that started. I, um I used to feel like, I would wait for inspiration to kind of appear out of nowhere, out of the ether, you know, and, and I, I always thought inspiration would just fall into my lap. And I realized that like, if I give myself a little bit of consistency every day, whether or not I feel inspired to do something in the moment, it, like the inspiration arrives as long as I start to do the work, as long as I start the process and get around it. I, I feel like, um, Lately, I've just been making my own inspiration at, rather than waiting for it. And it, it's wild because as soon as I feel like I'm in front of my computer, I, the sparks just start flying and I yeah. end up getting so inspired to create. That's awesome that, you've, that, you, that, you, that you're doing that now. Yeah, you're not definitely. Waiting around for, you're not waiting around for the muse. The muse, your, your, your muse is always there. You yeah, just definitely. Got, you just got to tap in. Well, sometimes it, it's wild. It, it's um, I I find myself learning something new quite regularly, and and sometimes the biggest lessons come if I only have five minutes to work on music for the day. Sometimes I don't even realize I got a, a lesson that was helpful within the five minutes that I had time to work on something. Um, and then the next time I go back to my computer all of a sudden it, it starts to amalgamate and all of a sudden uh yeah that that knowledge that lesson that inspiration from just five minutes uh comes and I feel like I used to make excuses of like oh I, I'm too busy I, I don't have enough time but really five ten minutes a day is achievable yeah. And um, it, it's just been so helpful for the learning process and, and for the creation process. I just start, there are certain days where, where I will, I will work on a song for like two or three hours. And then at the end, I'll just delete the entire thing because, <laughs> because I, I'll, cause I get it. Cause I get into, fl I get into flow state usually um, if I chug a bang and I take like three or four hits off my dab pen and then I start listening to sounds and, and playing around on the keyboard and all that stuff. So I get inspiration, but I'll, I'll start working on a song and I'll get it to a point where I like it. And then I'll go back and I'll race it. And I'll, th there's just certain days where I'm not on, like I, there's, I just can't click into that mode. Um, it doesn't happen all the time. It's, it's rarer for me not to be able to click in than, than not. Like I, it's easier. I, it's you, I usually click on and I'm good to go. Um, but probably at least once or twice a month, I'll start working on something and I will, I'll, I'll make a full song to the end and I will spend like four or five hours on it. And then I'll, and then I'll step away from the computer and I'll, 
go upstairs or I'll go for a walk or I'll play with my dogs and I'll come back and I'll listen to it and I'll be like, this sucks. And then I delete everything. I'm like, whatever. This one was not meant for it to be heard by anybody else in the universe other than me. And it's, and it's not going to be there, but, but usually I'm good and I'm good to go click in a flow state. I just feel like there's sometimes where the, where the muse or the universe is not speaking to me. Mm-hmm. And, and there are certain days when they are. Yeah. And, and not everything has to be good and not everything has to have the expectation of being a finished product. I, I feel like it's the expectation that kind of kills it because you, you yeah. can't force something to be a song. You can't force something to be good. All you can do is show up, experiment, play around. I mean, the that's the whole thing, like playing music. It, it's, it's, you don't, go into it with the expectation of anything you just play and if something comes out cool but if not you're not stuck on it and that in itself the fact that you could just delete it uh is kind of liberating in a way it's like yeah whatever that i was just doing that for me that was just play that's fine if nothing else beyond that experimentation comes and who knows maybe that's like those can sometimes be the elements where i you learn something and you don't even realize. Yeah. I, yeah, exactly. And like, I'll, sometimes I'll be working on a song like a month later and I'll remember the one song that I deleted and I'll be like, Oh wait, that the thing from that song would work perfectly here. That's right. So I bring it back in. Um, but yeah, that's that, that it is play. That's the whole thing. And it's, you know, it's, it's not just in music that that applies when I was in LA and I was trying to be an actor, I would usually get the gigs where I went in not giving a fuck at all. <laughs> I would like when I went in there and I was like, I don't even care if I get this job. Those are the ones that I always got callbacks for. The ones that I really, really wanted and I'd like, I like rehearsed like crazy, I never got. And I think it's because it's all about play. It's about not putting, you're right, it's about not putting expectations on it. And That's just right. letting it happen. And everything will align when it's supposed to align. Um, exactly. Just like dating, just like even at, at a job, sometimes I'm like, yeah, fuck it. Like, and all of a sudden I get a raise. And, yeah. And it's like, <laughs> or like you you don't hang on to needing somebody like as a partner, and all of a sudden you just relax and you're you're just yourself because you like you're playing, you're having fun. And that's how you get a partner, you know, like it, yeah. it's so applicable. You, it, we can't take ourselves so seriously. And sometimes it's like a, a forgetting and a relearning of that <laughs> life isn't so serious. It's just like a, a cosmic joke We're we're here for a lesson. We're, yeah. we're here to learn and I uh, just have fun, you know, music's supposed to be fun. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Exactly. When I had my DMT experience, I went and it was literally right before the pandemic. I was in San Francisco on on New Year's Eve and I saw Dead Mouse three times that night at three different parties. And <laughs> then we did DMT the next day. <laughs> and, Amazing. Uh, um, but what the what the machine or whatever the other entities told me, they were like, you everything that you want to happen will happen but not when you think it's going to happen and you can't tell anybody. And I was like, I was like, okay, that's the lesson that they, it is a joke. It's a joke. I mean, life is supposed to be fun. That's yeah. why it's, we're here to learn and to grow and to have fun and music, especially in art industry. That's I think is the most important thing. Some nights you're on and some nights you're off, but you just gotta, you gotta just brush it off and let whatever happened happen. Um, yeah. Without expectations, where we're, where, do you want yourself to be in like 10 years or do you have any like big long-term goals that you want to put out into the universe? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's my goal. It's my dream, my desire. Um, And something I'm working towards, I I would love to just be able to travel and share music with people around the world. It's my dream to be on tour and to uh, just experience that ability to meet different communities and and share that love share that base (laughs) with people and uh, experience the the passion from 
different people listening to my music. I, I mean, I feel like music is just meant to be shared. It feels so good. It makes me feel so happy and liberated. And realistically, I'm so content just keeping it all to myself and, and stuff. But you know what? I I feel like I'm meant to do more than that. I'm, I feel like I'm meant to spread that joy with other people in the communities um, and make new friends, you know. I, I've got a, a shorter term goal. It would be such a dream to play Shambhala. It would be a dream to um, play some music festivals um, that are outside of Canada, of course, as well. Um, yeah, I, I just want to get around more people. I just want to meet faces. I, I just want to share good music and listen to good music. It's <laughs> awesome. yeah, what I, about you? uh, I mean, ED, I want to, my big, I want to, I want to perform at EDC. Sweet. That's when I, when I went through my really bad breakup that made me leave LA, I went to, I just bought tickets to EDC. I wasn't even really into EDM. I was just, I mean, and I just went to EDC and it completely changed my life. And I just remember being in the crowd being like, oh shit. This is where I'm meant to be. I'm not, but I'm not meant to be down here. I'm meant to be up there. And I didn't even think about, I was like, I was like, oh my God. I saw Kygo, like, and I freaked out. I was like, I have to be up on, I have to be doing that. What they're doing, that's what I'm meant. So ED, performing on EDC. And then I could, and then I also want to host SNL and be the musical guest in SNL. I went to college for acting. I still want to be able to do that. So EDC and SNL are my two. biggest long-term goals um Amazing. I haven't yeah been to EDC. Um, what's it like? Is it one stage, a few stages? Uh, what's the experience? edc is it's eight six it's either i think it's eight state eight stages it What? takes over the entire las vegas motor speedway Oh it my is God. three days long and it is so the first year that i went what the the first year that I went was crazy because I was not prepared for it because you're there for like nine hours and it's a lot of walking and it's a lot of different stages and they're massive. It's the, it's, it's, I think it's bigger than ultra. Um, it's almost the size of Tomorrowland. It's like one of the biggest festivals in the United States. Um, it's, it's amazing. It's ma literally, I feel like it's, it's, it's Disney world. It's Disneyland for adults. It's like, the best it's the most love filled place I've ever been to. So that and base base. I also really want to perform base Canyon. That's another big goal of mine. And also Shambhala because that looks amazing. Um, So much fun. Yeah. Have you But been yet? no, I haven't been to Shambhala, but it's not, it's, I don't, which side of Canada is it on? It's on the uh, West Coast. So it's Okay. in BC, um, Yeah. up around Nelson, Salmo area. Such a beautiful location surrounded by mountains. Absolutely gorgeous land. Um, and I love that the, like, it's a camping festival. It's uh, across... Uh, just this amazing Salmo River uh, with beautiful crystal clear water flowing through. Uh, and the stages are all nestled in different places along the, the forest. And there are six stages. Um, it's just such a magical, life-changing place. That was my first festival. Isn't it also like alcohol free? Is that the one that's like drugs are okay, but alcohol they don't? Yeah, that's what they say. Um, <laughs> but I mean, people are camping. It's the key that really. In <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I mean, like they, I they do thoroughly check, um, and they do say that it is alcohol free. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I I think it is definitely more substance heavy. yeah, that's good though because alcohol can ruin things at. certain festivals um Oh, especially if it's combined with alcohol, that can be yeah really messy. and i think that's one of the reasons why edc especially edc and base canyon uh alcohol prices are insane like insanely high um <clears throat> like it was it's like 14 dollars for one beer for like Oh a bottle my gosh. yeah so it's crazy but i feel like it's good because it prevents people from overdoing it no one's That's gonna right. no one's gonna break their bank on 
alcohol at a music festival if it's insanely expensive and you know <clears throat> so I, I don't think it's i don't i i have seen i have seen a lot of people not make it to base canyon because they got too messed up at the camping site <laughs> um so i i think it's a good i think it's a good thing that alcohol is so expensive at other festivals and i really think that it's cool that shambhala is says that they do that because there's better there's better things to do especially if you're, <laughs> if you're at a festival which is you're supposed to be there to experience music not to get messed up totally where's uh where's base canyon located that's in at the gorge amphitheater in washington oh okay washington state it's insanely beautiful base canyon so i went to went after edc i went to paradiso and when i was at paradiso people were handing out flyers for base canyon and i was like okay well there's another festival going to be here in a couple months i'm definitely going and it was it was one of the best festivals i've ever been to it's where i like formed my first rave family <laughs> which are all kind of splintered now but for a couple years we were really all tight-knit um and it's the amphitheater is like the gorge is the background so it's like this giant canyon with the river running through it and it's beautiful it's insanely beautiful there's only two stages at base camp well three if you count the camping stage but it's not really like a big stage um but it's really cool and it's all it's like 99 percent dubstep it's all heavy bass music oh. bass house and dubstep and it's excision and uh, I would love to check that out. That sounds great. It's so cool. It's such a good festival. It's so, and Excision, he runs that and Lost Lands, which is in Ohio. Um, he's like, he he's on top of it. So like the, the, the uh, porter potties are being cleaned constantly. The food is really, really good. There, we, I did dubstep karaoke um which was awesome and that's I, so cool yeah it was so much fun and literally i didn't do this because i did i picked rail breaker which actually has lyrics um but there were people going up there doing dubstep karaoke just making the sounds with their mouths oh, <laughs> it was yes. like, that was so it was so funny it was really cool <laughs> they they have like bingo they have yoga during in the more every morning um it's it's a excision knows what he's doing this is like I think this year was the fifth base Canyon ever. Um, and every year it's getting better because every year he's, he's lit. He listens to what people say about the festivals and what needs to be improved. And like, um, it's, it was real. It's a really, it's a really good festival. Um, See, that's so important getting the community feedback. And I, I think that can be really challenging for people getting feedback on things that need improvement at the same time. That's, a huge way to be able to grow something and just something so big. Yeah. Yeah. That's another one of my goals is to, is to have my own festival. But really? Now, now that I think about it. Yeah. I want to get to that. I want to get to that point where I can throw my own festival. Well, I have the land for it. I'm on, I'm on uh, 82 acres in the oh, middle wow. of nowhere, Oregon, like on top of a mountain. So oh my gosh. if I could build it out and afford to buy out all of my neighbors, properties <laughs> one day uh i think i could throw a festival and i would want you... go ahead no you go ahead <laughs> and I, I, I would want it to be all like all genres i wouldn't want it to be like base canyon is dubstep but there's but a little bit of house is starting to creep in now um but i wouldn't want to limit that and i wouldn't want to limit to to music to edm either i would want to have rappers i would want to have rock band i would want to have like a full-on every genre cross genre crazy combo music festivals where you take a take like a rapper and pair them with the dubstep dj and like have them do a back-to-back -back and stuff like that is kind of what i would want to do that would be amazing i i love multi-genre festivals like that so much yeah do you uh do you have a potential name for it how many stages would you want stuff like that in mind oh i don't i mean I don't know. Chance Fest would, is kind of a little too ego stroke, um, but uh, <laughs> the name of our farm is Wild Inclination, so I want it to be like wild in the mountains or something, something that incorporates wild and mountains. Um, I actually have a list somewhere on my phone 
where I wrote out a bunch of them, but I haven't narrowed them down yet. That's yeah. good. I, I feel like having a list to just jot down your ideas as they flow is so good. I've uh, I've really taken to uh, making so many notes and phone lists and uh, I've been using Trello actually to just keep my ideas organized. Otherwise, I'll that's definitely smart. forget them. Yeah, that's really smart Let's just start doing that. I just, oh, use, I, I just use notes, but I need that's to... That's great on the go. Yeah, I need to get more organized with stuff like that. Um, who would you want to like collaborate with? You said that you like all genres of music. Mm -hmm. Is there any, do you have any, like, do you have like a collaboration bucket list? Oddly enough, I don't. I, um, I feel like there are a lot of like some musicians I would like to meet, but I don't know about collaboration. Um, I hadn't thought about that. Um, you know what? I think working with Ivy Lab would be really cool. Um, and maybe Opio would be sweet. <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah. Um, but aside from that, I don't know. Um, I, I wouldn't necessarily collab, but someone I've always wanted to meet, and this might be a little bit like surprising because uh, it's totally different genre and style that I, I play um, but I've had dreams multiple times for the past several years of meeting Marilyn Manson nice. <laughs> and That's I cool. feel, yeah and every time I have a dream it's just the most chill casual conversation and I always feel super inspired as soon as I wake up and so yeah I, I feel like I at some point need to fulfill that dream because it, it's got to mean something it's happened enough times now where i'm like all right something something's here <laughs> yeah. uh aside from that like i yeah i don't know about collaborations i uh, do who do you uh, sorry i can't talk now who do you have on your <laughs> list <laughs> uh mine is crazy um like i want to i want to work with the backstreet boys and marshmallow <laughs> and uh uh, Bryce Vine and Camilla Cabello and like Selena Gomez and Excision, <laughs> like Kygo. I want to oh, ACDC. Yeah. You know, I actually I would love to like make a song with Smash Mouth. Like I, it's, that would be so fun and nostalgic. Yeah, they actually follow me on Instagram, so nice. I need to just I need to just reach out to them because. Um, they they I know that they'd be down. But the the lead singer, they replaced the lead singer a couple years a few years ago. And the lead singer just passed away last year. Wow. Um, but they're still they're still touring, they're still rocking and rolling. They actually released a song with Timmy Trumpet like not that long ago, too. So they're in the sphere. But I want to work with everybody and anyone that that can take can take the seeds of music that I make and go off in the craziest direction. I want to go. I want to cover all genres. I'd love to work with Marilyn Manson too. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> that would that would be awesome. Um, yeah, everybody, uh, everybody. I love that. I love that. And there are so many possibilities with that. And you know, it doesn't hurt to just reach out. Who knows? Maybe like they're down right now. They like they yeah. they would do it for sure. <laughs> well, I, I, I like you don't know until you ask. I guess. That, yeah, I did that with the. Um, I don't know if you grew. Did you ever watch the Power Rangers growing up? Yeah, a little bit. Um, so Tommy, the Green Ranger, Jason David Frank, um, he was he was a poet and he would uh put these poems of his on YouTube. And I ripped one of his poems called Fall and I made it I made like a future based song with it and I sent it to him and he was like, dude, this rocks, let's release it. And I was like, Oh my god, Please. like my I have a tattoo of the tiger ranger logo which is he was the white ranger after the green ranger <laughs> i have that tattoo on my arm and like he was like i have green ranger stuff all over the place and i did not think in a million years that he would just be down and i when i made the song it it's like i wasn't even thinking i had like a glass of i had like two glasses of wine i was just scrolling through youtube and i saw his song and i was like i'm just gonna make a song and i made it and then i just sent it to him i was like fuck it i'm just gonna send it to him and he, yes. he responded and he was like dude yes let's do it so yeah 
it is about yeah. it is about just putting it out there i try that to do goes right back to that flow state we were talking about like when you're just like yeah fuck it like let's just do it and, and like exactly that like that's yeah. so awesome man congratulations yeah. that's super cool thank you yeah it was pretty it was pretty awesome it was i was very shocked that he was like yeah he was down and then his daughter um royal sky <clears throat> she asked me to send her a couple beats too so i sent those to her um i might have her on as a guest on this podcast uh in the future we've yeah. talked about it i just haven't i need to reach back out to her because she asked me for beats and i sent them to her i don't know if they actually went in anywhere but yeah <clears throat> it's about just it's about just going with the flow literally that's how you get into flow state it's just go with it 100 yeah. percent. which is funny because our like our, our monkey mind human brains want to resist the flow and and overthink yeah. everything but if we just go with it like without thinking it, it's almost like it works out for the best like our our intuition is so strong if we just let it work yeah let's talk about drive and move your body because those are both awesome funky really 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 cool songs um where 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 did they come from where was your inspiration for them i <laughs> i feel like i've been so inspired by um uh <laughs> well like funk music lately i i love the idea um this is weird i i love racing i and i've always been inspired by racing and uh cars and things like that and I always picture myself when I'm driving as like a race car driver and I always picture myself <laughs> drifting and so when I listen to music I uh, I guess I've been making music lately that I envision myself driving to as a race car driver nice. as odd as that is um, and so those songs I uh, kind of allow me to embody this imaginary persona that I, I've had since I was a kid. I mean, I grew up listen, watching racing all the time and I still have such an obsession with like, racing movies and video games and shows, you know, like um, it, it's just, it's an odd obsession for someone who's driving a minivan. <laughs> 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 and so, I, yeah, it's kind of odd that like I, every time I drive, I, I, doesn't matter what car what vehicle i'm driving it it's just like it's a persona i've put on and so um i feel like i have a lot of personas when i'm creating and so move and or move your body and drive have kind of uh, allowed me to channel that <laughs> race car driver yeah <laughs> that's cool that is cool and i can hear it now now that i like i saw that like they're called they're like in an ep songs for drifting but i didn't like make that connection until now that's yeah. really that's really cool i, I get uh, it if i kind of have been going with like uh i i think artistically uh, like i i do a lot of graphic design and my favorite style has been kind of more of like a futuristic cyberpunk dystopian kind of society like i i, I picture myself driving but also like it's driving in space if that makes sense so yeah. like it's kind of combining my alias uh identity with this persona <laughs> that's cool that's very cool that's that that's and i i like i can picture them now like in fast fast 11 or fast 12 or like whatever <laughs> totally. the next fast than the furious movies coming up <laughs> right? they would fit perfectly into them that's awesome cool Man, it would be super cool to like have music in a movie. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe that's, that's a goal. That's yeah. a future goal is to have music in the upcoming Fast and the Furious movie. So we'll put that out there. So so there's a company called So Stereo, S O S T E R O E, I believe. Um, they do sync licensing deals. You should reach out to them because they So can... Stereo? Yeah. So Stereo. Um cool. I'm signed with them. They send me and they haven't they haven't sent me anything recently, but they like submit they submitted my music for like a Burger King commercial and different stuff like that. Um, nothing's I don't think anything's really panned out. I might have gotten it on like a there was like a three hundred dollar gig for 
just playing it in like Walgreens or something like that um, for a short YouTube ad. And that one, I think I got paid for it, but they do have big breakdowns and getting on, getting a sync licensing deal can be huge because you can get, if you get one of your songs in a commercial and then the commercial keeps getting replayed and then they re edit the commercial, but they include your music, you get paid for all of that. Every time it gets oh, played. That so, would be really cool. Yeah. I'd look up sync licensing deals and the best companies for that. Um, Cause move your body and drive could totally both work like big time. They're awesome. That would be so awesome. I have just written that in my phone notes. Cool. Yeah. Thank you for the tip. Absolutely. So we're going to play them. Um, but before we do, I'd like to uh, end every every episode with talking about things that you're grateful for and on a really, really high note. So what cool. would what are like three or four things that you were most grateful for? I'm really grateful that you're doing this because I actually tell uh, I I actually express my gratitude before every show uh, personally so um, I did that before we even did this podcast nice. I'm uh, I'm grateful for music I'm grateful for community I'm grateful for being able to share and express the things that I love I'm grateful for you for doing this amazing podcast and for expressing yourself and inspiring people around you um and i'm i'm very very grateful to have the opportunity to be alive and do what i do awesome thank you what about you i'm grateful for my family my 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 partner our kids my farm our animals my parents and music music is Music is life. That's why I'm here. And and this. And I'm grateful for you for being on. Thank you again. Um, Thank you. It's been such a pleasure. Yeah. Before before we go, tell everybody where they can find you. I uh, I'm on all the major platforms. I I find I'm on Instagram the most at uh, Synchron C Y N C R O N Don. Uh, and you can find me on SoundCloud, YouTube, all the things. Awesome. Alrighty, well, here is Drive and